Yeah, I think we still have a long way to go to really understand the boundaries of open innovation. So you can look at some of the major open innovation projects. Let me take you know, Linux with over 10 million lines of source code and say, wow, open innovation can create things of massive, massive complexity. But if you realistically look at it, could open innovation really develop the new jetliner? I mean, if you think about the Boeing 787, the meticulous attention to all of the pieces working together and the really tight trade-offs that have to get made to make an airframe and engines all come together into one solution. And I would actually argue now with the management technology in place, we probably, open innovation is not appropriate uh, for a problem like that. So that obviously begs the question, well, where is it appropriate and where is it not? And let me stick with the airframe example. So the 787 requires so much coordination of all the pieces that are all interrelated, it's tough to imagine open innovation doing that. But open innovation works extremely well and certainly better than coordinated innovation in areas where problems can be modular and where innovation can be iterative. So thinking about airplanes, think of the 757. It was developed by Boeing in the late 70s and early 80s. And it was primarily designed to be a domestic aircraft in the US or in Europe uh, that could fly basically a transcon mission with the outer edge of its range maybe being New York to London. But if we look at a lot of the missions for the 757 today, they're flying as far as from New York to Berlin. And it's because of the myriad innovations that have happened beyond Boeing over the last 20 years. You know, companies developing winglets that make the plane fly further, uh, software additions to the engine control systems that make them a little more fuel efficient, um, new interiors that are significantly lighter, all the way to innovations in weather forecasting and real-time updates so you can uh, change flight plans ever so slightly. Um, all of changes to add components uh, on the airplane that are made out of titanium, which is a little lighter. And these myriad of changes that have come from engine manufacturers and software companies, uh, from the airlines themselves, um, together have been able to stretch the mission of that airplane significantly beyond what the coordinated efforts of Boeing to design the plane in the first place. So collaborative innovation can do things that uh, certainly a kind of a top-down coordinated innovation can't. And that those can actually work together on a set of projects or a pro set of products. And so I think that there can be a symbiotic relationship between the two. I think over time, as companies and as people get more comfortable with open innovation and as management technologies uh, catch up uh, and we learn to better leverage open innovation, you'll see an even broader uh, set of problems. But if you ask me today, I would say things uh, of almost infinite size can be solved with open innovation as long as the problem can be broken down into component parts and those modular components can iterate on their own pace and their own timeline. In areas like that, the human genome, um, problems like that can be solved in a way that um, there's just no way a coordinated effort uh, can match.